The Creative CGM04 is a right-handed, ergonomically shaped gaming mouse with seven programmable buttons, including the DPI switch on top. The Siege comes in at approximate length of 136mm, a width of 68 and a height of 43, weighing in at around 110 grams without the cable. This does make it one of the heavier gaming mice geared toward competitive players on the market, but its shape is also one of the most comfortable that I've had the pleasure of using. I'm especially happy that its back slope does not raise aggressively to its highest point, giving me a lot of control, and I'd argue the Siege is a love child of somebody fond of both the G402 and G502 from Logitech. In that respect, its ergonomics definitely complement its weight, and I had no problem throwing it around during longer sessions. Now the Siege features the PMW 3360 optical sensor with DPI of up to 12,000. The sensor again features crazy fast max tracking speeds and no discernible smoothing below 2K, aka it is immediately responsive in tracking, which is a thank you by the way to Logitech as it's based on their exclusive PMW 3366. Now the on-run buttons are rated for 50 million clicks and feel both tactile and responsive with no pre-travel to any of them, Although, I'd like to have seen wider side buttons or have them positioned slightly lower to allow for easier rolling of the thumb to activate as they're still curved nicely. But if you're interested, here is a listen to the clicks. Overall, the shape and presentation of the CGM04 is extremely professional and comfortable, and I'm very much looking forward to getting into testing. So on receiving the M04, make sure you head over to creative.com and install Sound Blaster Connect, navigate to the settings cog, hit the device tab and go to firmware update. This will make sure you don't run into any issues that have already been ironed out. And there were some features added, so do the same for the software, such as sniper button DPI levels. This application unifies both the keyboard and mouse into one package, you get control over lighting, performance for the sensor and macros, and the DPI levels will be saved to the onboard profile. So if you do travel to events and you can't always install software at events, your settings will come with you. So that's very much appreciated. But in terms of lighting, you can manually sync up both the keyboard and mouse by selecting the same lighting profile with the same speed. But what you can't do is have them talk to each other by pressing a button and linking them. So let's say you want a lighting profile, let's say Wave Ice Blue, that starts on the left of the mouse and goes to the right of the mouse. You can't also have that first start on the keyboard. So it goes from the left of the keyboard to the right of the mouse. But with the same speed, they will start and end at the same point. So they are in sync. It's just they're not working together as such. So I'd like that maybe in future. But in all honesty, the lighting is bright, vibrant, uniform. And the only downside to the lighting itself on the Siege Mouse is the fact you cannot customize the scroll wheel. That will always be white. But you do get full control over seven zones around the bottom of the mouse. And you can set these in full RGB including the option between solo, non and pulsate. Alternatively, you can just select one of the predefined rainbow or wave options and away you go. But in terms of sensor performance, we've got three DPI levels, increments of 100 from 100 all the way to 12,000. So plenty of steps, most importantly, below 400 for games that need it. And you want to stay below 2K, as is the case with the PMW 3360, to avoid any added smoothing to jitter correct and in other words adds input lag so stay below 2000 and you're going to be gravy three steps on a button that's not easily hit by mistake is also a great thing you've got sniper burn of which there's no delay when clicking i don't know why it's set to 100 to be honest since i play with 800 or 1600 i'm going to leave this on 400 and I mean, this also highlights the other minor annoyance is the fact that you can't type the number. You have to manually select it. But in terms of acceleration and deceleration, it's nice to have. I'd like a bit more control over acceleration, but I suppose there's only so much they can do in drivers. But again, it's nice to have rather than not. Polling rate all the way up to a thousand, which is one millisecond. Two liftoff distance settings and angle snapping. 
The only things really here that are missing is a power of with the angle snapping because some people do like it, particularly games like Call of Duty where you need to stay on a head height level more than you are aiming up and down with like a lightning gun or a rocket launcher. Even Counter-Strike to some extent it could be useful, but having an on and off it could be too harsh or not enough depending on the kind of play you are. And finally, maybe an option for mass button debounce time, but as you're shortly about to find out, it's incredibly low and you're not going to have any issues with it whatsoever. And finally, in terms of macros, uh, you've got control over pretty much any single button, including mouse one. So you do need to be careful with this, but you could just plug in another mouse, go to the settings here, hit device and reset to default if you mess up. But I'll talk more about this in the keyboard because that's obviously something we're likely to use macros on more than mouse, which I'm personally going to disable. So for our first test here with the CGM04, we're going to be looking for a lack of mouse acceleration inherent to the implementation of the PMW3360 because acceleration can be good for running, it can be controlled, and obviously Creative offer the ability to add it in drivers, or you can do it in game afterwards as some top players like to do, but this time slightly quicker, and a third time even faster. As you can see, basically in the same place, taking into account some small degree of human error. And not only that, but it's pretty much impossible to make malfunction, crazy max tracking speeds, so no issues whatsoever with the sensor. But what I tell everybody on my stream is when changing mouse, always measure your centimeters per 360 because DPI levels can vary due to lift off distance and mouse to mouse. Here you can see it's slightly higher than advertised, particularly at those increased values. Not to worry, just gotta make sure you count for the difference. And in terms of button latency, on par with my MM530 using the scientifically inaccurate, but still plausible bump test on par two with my Logitech, which leads us nicely into our next segment. So moving into Shoot Mania, we want to ensure there's no issues with the mouse button debounce time using an inbuilt feature called Variable Jump. So if you've got mouse 2 to jump and hold it, you do a full height. And if you tap it, you should do a small height jump. And as you can see there, there's no issues with that. And on top of that, we can tap it lots and lots and lots and lots of times and do so many consecutive mini jumps. And it's one of the better implementations that I've seen. But this is important because if you've got mouse 1 to fire and mouse 2 to jump in games like Quake Live or Quake Champions, it might mean you won't be able to do a full height rocket jump because the second button isn't registered in quick enough succession that you'll shoot before you jump or you'll jump before you shoot but as you can see no issues whatsoever and just to mention quickly the sniper button there is absolutely zero delay or stutter when pushing it down so if you're playing battlefield and you want to increase it for a turret you'll be able to do that just fine and if you're playing Quake, Battlegrounds, H1Z1, and you want to decrease it, again, it's not something I would do, but if you want to do it, then just a stellar implementation all around from creative, it seems quite astonishing, really, that this mouse came out of nowhere and it's doing all of this and then some. So moving into Counter-Strike to look at lift-off distance, we're currently set to 2mm in the drivers, and the DVD is about 1.2mm in thickness, and placing the Siege on top, you can see it does not track. So lift-off distance with the lowest setting in the drivers on a black QCK heavy cloth mouse pad is below one2 And if we set it to 3mm and go back into game, as you can see it tracks above 1 DVD but it does not track above two. So you can either have below one or below two DVDs and lift off distance, a perfect amount of customization here and no complaints whatsoever. It functions perfectly at the two settings. Three, two, one. So gaming on the CGM04, well let's start off by saying who knew Creative could make such a good gaming mouse? I mean in all honesty it's a damn shame it's not 10 grams lighter, even though I had no problem using the mouse for competitive shooters, and to be honest, found it to be the most comfortable mouse since my death at it. I already know for sure there's somebody in the comments writing lol 110 grams no thanks. I mean, had they hit the 100 grams mark, and they're not wrong here, I think they'd sell a lot of this mouse. Potentially their keyboard too, with its on-run switches. Its button latency is incredibly low, and on par with that of my MM530, and thus Logitech G403. And thanks to those buttons being separated from the shell, they also feel easy to push down at the front or back, so whether your palm, fingertip, or claw grip, all grip styles will suit this mouse. The onboard memory is sufficiently powerful for event use. Its sensor performance and positioning is perfect. Tracking enemy model directional changes in Quake felt natural, especially with my low input lag ViewSonic monitor. The weight distribution of the mouse is perfect for lifting and throwing around, and I never once accidentally hit the sniper button, so that's cool. 
I mean, I could go on and on, but really, what's the point? Right now, I'm not really sure if I love or hate creative. I mean, I've been using their sound cards now for as long as I can remember, and I'm pretty sure I always will. Sound is one of the things you have to hear for yourself in order to really appreciate the difference that a high-end card can make to your experience and headphones. It's often the last thing a gamer thinks about, which is kind of backwards given its importance, right? But here, the performance of the mouse I hope shows in the video, and I've only just gotten used to my MM530 after being stuck with a death adder for the past decade. So why on earth did I have to go and ask to review this? Because this is just another spanner in the works. But anyway, if you like the review, make sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you're in the market for a mouse and you're after a right-handed product, definitely check this out. It's worth a shot 100% if you think you can deal with 110 grams weight. And don't forget, I do stream every day on Twitch from 6pm, so do check me out and get involved in the live discussion if you're up for it. But for now, take care, keep gaming, and I'll catch you next time.